now we come to Professor Aaron Sikawa from Trans Brahma, who's a scientist. Uh, he's going to um, <clears throat> share some thoughts, I believe, on um, biology from his own specialism. Are you there, Aaron? Oh, yes, yes. Hello. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, uh, Professor Thomas uh, and Casey Dhatsar, Professor Swaminathan, Professor Alexander. Professor Glenn and all you know dignitaries present here and also uh, watching this video later on so uh, I'm, I'm Arun from uh, Agra city of Taj Mahal in India and thank you so much for allowing me and this is my first time I'm on such a great platform you know so senior platform I can say and uh, I will be uh, having my structured uh, presentation through my PPT and I wish the PPT is visible to you I mean, you can see my PowerPoint, sir? Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. So, so as the, the title of this World Intellectual Forum is having global thinking for peace and sustainability, and what role can faith, spirituality, and philosophy play in this uh, process? So it means we are having, and we are having brainstorming in this uh, forum, maybe because the, but the world is facing a lot of problems and it is indeed true also we know especially during nowadays we, we all have come across through this uh, uh, webinar on the Zoom just because of coronavirus all around us so I, being a biologist, a hardcore biologist uh, my PhD and postdoc experiences I would like to have some science purview and very less philosophical part that I leave it for you all uh, senior so my, uh, this title goes like, does social neuroscience or brain education? I mean, I want to emphasize the brain biology because I'm a neurobiologist. I did my three postdoctoral associate in abroad in this biology. May be harnessed to create peace, sustainability and harmony in the world. So I will be having my own points, how we can use this brain biology because ultimately it is the human brain that, that decides anything, that karma, love, anger, uh, peace, uh, hate, any, any, you know, all the faculties that, that lie in the brain. So, uh, so I, I, I could just now see on the, uh, on the world meter that we are now 7.8 billion people as of today. And this population is increasing quite exorbitantly year by year. However, there are a lot of casualties because of this novel coronavirus nowadays but but that is uh, more or less you know sooner or later it will be over so we we do find in the world there's a lot of variety and variety is the nature of the color whether in physics we have read that how uh, one white color is made up of several other colors so in the same way the people all, all over the world are having a, a, a division in in the aspect of racial gender social aspect religious aspect nationalities and and several other you know, uh, you know interpersonal and international conflicts so people are divided and that gives variety and then there are, lot of, there are a lot of problems we are discussing few of them are development many countries are you know running behind because they are busy in amassing a lot of you know uh, armed race they are getting fighter planes missiles etc and there are a lot of environmental problems human rights human security community harmony and and so many things are affecting and which is having directly implication over the peaceful coexistence of we all of us and for that purpose we are here to to churn out our ideas and why not we all humans should have an independent thinking to bring peace harmony ethics morality judgmental and this everything and to think about if we can have a utopia or we can have a like just now professor famina then says intergovernmental, uh, international, single government kind of thing. Can we think about this? Can it be possible in the due course of time? So now I want to take you back in the pre, uh, sorry, Paleolithic or old stone age, when there were only few uh, million uh, humans, those were, you know, uh, just have come out from the evolution from the uh, new world monkeys and old world monkeys. And they were uh, our, our four, uh, forefathers so this uh, process has happened in last million years to few thousand years uh, back so early humans did not just anything with logic or reason logic and reason 
but were governed by the faith mostly due to fear. So I would like to have your uh, attention here. Probably there was no religion, there was no no instinct of you know uh, spiritualism or something. They were having just eating uh, food because they were having a habit of uh, eating uh, raw food and just reproduction because reproduction is an instinct behavior. So reproduction is done by even animals also nicely. So they worship the elements mightier than them in order to be safe and secure. And as you have heard this, that earlier these humans were worshiping fire, sky, water, stones, earth, and whatever, you know, even sun. And they were feeling the fear and that's why they were worshiping them. And probably later on during this period, slowly, slowly this religion might have come across, you know, and their religious beliefs were based on the nature and natural resources. Now, during this procedure of millions of years ago, you have to uh, come across with this unanimous, uh, uh, you know, this information that human brain capacity has increased rapidly. So initially, like few million, few million years back, this like Australopithecus and Homo have lived there, brain capacity or this neurocranium was smaller. So the brain tissue was smaller. If brain is smaller, then number of neurons, which is the structural and functional unit of the brain, was also very less. So slowly, slowly, you know, we have come across up to now Homo sapiens, sapiens now, which is having like 1700 cc brain capacity, that is the highest. And then we increased this uh, brain size. Now brain size increased, so the so the brain has, you know, demarcation <clears throat> and, and, and partition of different, different parts and that they made uh, lead to the different functions. Now this is one YouTube uh, uh, but TEDx uh, talk by <clears throat> Susanna Harkulen Hosel from uh, USA. She has talked about uh, how, you know, during that evolution, human race increased in the size, number of neurons increased from few billion to 86 billion, whatever presently we have. And this way, we humans increased have a demand of more uh, number of uh, kilocalories in the food because to harness neurons in the brain is a very much you know energy consuming process so 86 billion needs around 516 kilocalories and we consume almost 2000 kilocalories uh, by food by sitting like two rounds of lunch and dinner day by day so this way we increased and in the meantime the daytime humans use for some motor function doing some discovering new things and this procedure led to the industrial revolution and humans came up with a lot of you know organs tools preparation and that slowly slowly we have come up today now we have a lot of this technology so now i would like to have your attention towards the brain and mind so brain is an anatomical part that is uh, one can see it one can feel it one can take it out and it is made up of blood nerve cells glial cells and there are a lot of you know neurophysiology and neuroanatomy inside the brain there is a mind mind is a mental thing it is an abstract thing that you cannot take a photograph by the neuro imaging or so mind is ultimate thing that that we harness and that we day by day with our experiences be updated with the basic information like today i will be uh, sub, uh, increasing the level of my mind after listening to you so it refers to the person's conscience, understanding and thought processes. It keeps now thought process, if I say so, this can lead to the even bad processes also, like a terrorist can think from this mind only and a policeman or be like we all of us having a cognitive uh, positive aspect, we can think that way. So it is the mind that plays this uh, whole world affection. Now numerous problems are there in the world, especially COVID problem right now. And you know we have not yet uh, finished the, uh, the 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 empowered the cancer or HIV AIDS. Now new problem has come up Corona. Or maybe in next few years, even further you know some more pandemic may come up. So we have to fight this, and the solution lies with us human. Now I borrowed this picture from the internet. It shows it shows that there are a lot of problems in the world right now: wars, terrorism, certain violation of human rights, economic crisis like that. And then the causes of that is political corruption. It is the highest, you know, 15.3 everywhere because ultimately, because there's more democracy in the world. So ultimately this onus goes on a political corruption that leads all the arrangement in other aspects for 
unfair world economy, everything. So these are the causes. Now, so the root of, uh, of our global problem lies in the human brain, because as I told you, a terrorist person, I can say a bad person or good person, everyone uses its own brain, but in a different mode, different directions. One can do the positive things, one cannot do the positive things. So it is the human brain itself that has all the answers, solutions and remedies of all the available global problems. Because we are the only having that problem, so we have the solution also. And for such solutions like we all of us are here, similarly such kind of dialogues should keep happening throughout the world. Now, indeed without any doubt, human brain is impacted by the life events or the environment. That is true. Like whatever we are in an environment, it impacts our thinking, our behavior, our personality. And thus the brain and its natural neural process have an impact on our environment. That affects like like you know terrorism uh, infected area, how the how the child start having you know gun in their hand in the very early years. So I mean exceptions are everywhere. I'm not saying that uh, many good people even come out from such places. But but it affects. So human brain and the outer world and the environment are correlated. They they work in symphony. And, and both things affect each other. Now, now there's a, a, a human cognition. Cognition is the set of faculties that allow the human mind to process input from the external world. And there are a lot of faculties of the cognition of mind, like perception, love, hate, learning, reasoning, logical and analytical thinking, vision and ideas, etc. Now, so uh, potentially traumatic stresses that a lot of studies are there that in the people who live in the stressful situation whether terrorism or bad things keep happening, how the brain and body functions, ultimately it affects the behavior. Other work, like like in the poverty and growing up in a chaotic household or community, the people and children are affected in that wrong way. Children who grew up and amid economic insecurity in developing countries often face many obstacles in their environment also, it's true. So does the inculcation of brain education and social neuroscience can be useful to bring the peace, harmony, sustainability and other positive impact in the world. And the answer says, yes, it is so. So I'm in favor of uh, probably, uh, if it is possible, can we increase the brain education and neuroscience in our curriculum throughout the world? Okay, and does everyone should know the potentials of the brain because it is the human brain only which can contemplate its own meaning. Like kidney cannot think about about its function, heart cannot think about about heart problem. It is the brain, and because of brain, we are we are behaving here also and, and presenting our presentation. So the human brain is neuroplastic. It is the good news uh, from the on, on. So it is like plastic. If you and it can rewire. If you are given a better environment or better information, it can rewire. It can reshape itself to a positive side and it can can give a result of positive thoughts, meditation, dialogue, social interaction, etc. Now this aspect is now coming up very nicely, social neuroscience. Initially it was thought that human brain works in solely individual basis, but now it is proven fact that that there are this phenomena of mirror neurons of Valainu Ramachandran from University of California also that human brain and be copy from each other. It is the social interaction. How a child of a two par parents behave in the same way and he or she does understand the parents' feelings. So this way, traditional neuroscience has considered that human brain remain an isolated entity, but nowadays it is not so. It is affected by the environment. Like I'm here with you, so probably I'm imbibing some positive vibes in me and that is the social neuroscience. Okay, so and then brain education is very necessary from east and west i mean to say so the from east we have like meditation and yoga and few years back 21st june has been declared by united nations as an international yoga day and yoga is very much popular even nowadays in, in the covid period when people are feeling stress in their home this meditation and yoga is affecting very positively not only india but throughout the world because it it affects and shoots in the brain and West has developed with a lot of, you know, technology in the neuroscience and neurobiology, like fMRI, EEG. So I want to say that East and West, like meditation and yoga, 
and these aspects of East and West car in the technology can be amalgamated and can give a better result. And then few countries like El Salvador and Liberia, these countries have shown positive result. So there are five steps of brain education, sensitization, versatilizing, refreshing, integrating and mastering. And this way we can start and inculcating this neuroscience to uh, the students. Hopefully so, this inculcation neuroscience, especially social neuroscience, uh, will lead to positive impact to create social, economic and beneficial changes in the countries. So let's know more about the past potential of the brain. The brain is the only organ, as I told you, which can think about its own meanings and we can harness it for the positive things. And this is my last slide. Thank you so much. <clears throat> I try to be in the time. Thank you, Professor Thomas. Right, there well, thank you so much, Aaron. That was a brilliant um, presentation, very relevant to our discussions. And um, I'm speaking from close to the village called Descartes, where Descartes came from. The French philosopher who said, I think, therefore I am. So by bringing cognition to our meeting and brain science, you're, you know, if we're the World Intellectual Forum, we, know, we have to know what the brain is, how it works, what is the intellect. Um, one quite, there's some research on the heart, that the heart has its own neurology. Some people think the heart also has a sense of self and can think, so that's my only little question mark about that. I'm not sure it's all in the brain. Maybe there's something else in the heart. Okay. Discuss. Yeah. We can look at that. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm.